So what we're going to do is see how we can pass a scanner object as a parameter to a method. And then we'll talk about why maybe that's not always a good idea in the scenarios in which you would want to do it. So here is a program that uses a scanner. So we define a scanner and two integers. We prompt the user for those two integers, and then we print the numbers between those numbers inclusive. So if I run that, if I enter the start, we'll say five and we'll go to 17 and it prints five to 17. So we could make a method that does this and then I could do it more than once. And the way I'm going to declare that method, so it'll be public static void. And again, it has to be static because we're going to use it in main, which is the static method. It's void because it's not going to return anything. And then we'll call this print between. And it's going to take a scanner and we'll call that scanner SCNR. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take all of this code. So it looks like that's 11 lines and I'm going to put it in this method. So now, in my main method, I can call print between and then pass the scanner as the parameter. So now the scanner is the object that gets passed to this method. So when I run, it's going to do the same exact thing we saw before, except now I can very easily do this twice. So if I run this again, we'll say 10 to 20. And then for the second attempt, we'll do 30 to 50. So that's one approach to writing a method that uses a scanner. So the problem we run into is this method is called print between. So what type of parameters would you expect there to be in a method called print between? Now, I would think that the parameters should be the numbers you want to print between. And so, I think a better way to do something like this, and we're actually going to use overloading here. And in this case, I'm going to just take this code and copy it. And it's just going to actually have the loop as its parameter. This just is a function that does one thing. Notice this method does two things. The first thing it does is it prompts the user and gets the input from the user. Then it prints the numbers. And I would argue that that's probably too much for one method to do. Because the simpler your methods, the easier they are to test, the easier they are to make changes to if you find bugs, and the less likely they are to have bugs because the less code you write, the less likely you are to have a bug. And so now here, when I have this method, I also have more flexibility. So let's suppose I take this prompt and, and add it to my code. And I'll say the second start here and the second end. And I need to declare those. So now when I run this, instead of calling print between with the scanner, I'm going to call print between. And just to avoid confusion, I'm going to call these X and Y, which granted are terrible variable names, but I want to make it clear that I'm, I'm reading a separate value in here that then I'm passing to that function. So now when I do print between X, Y, it should call this method because it's overloaded. And this needs to be start and end. So I don't need this after all. Okay. So I think that clears up my issues. And when I run this method, I'll go from 10 to 15. I'll go from 17 to 32. And that seems to work. And so you'll notice there's really no difference in the actual code or the execution of the code. The difference is that here I have a method that lets you print in between the two numbers by giving me the two numbers. And so now this method doesn't make assumptions that now the user has to do input. Because for example, suppose I asked you to write a function that printed 10 consecutive numbers starting with one, let's say. Well, I could do a method like this. Actually, let's just say 15. And we'll say we're gonna print between 10 times II and 10 times II plus 10. Now watch what this does. I've got to give it my typical numbers. But notice my loop, it actually allows me to call multiple of these 
without prompting the user. Now imagine if I was asking the user each time. So a method that doesn't take a scanner, but that takes the parameters can go ahead and start working. It doesn't have to wait. It's possible to write a function that takes a scanner as a parameter and you should only have one open scanner at a time. So that's a good technique to use. However, you don't want to actually create a new scanner inside a method. If you're going to use a scanner, it's probably best to pass it in, but passing it in creates its own set of difficulties because for example, this is now set in stone. The prompts are set in stone. Any sort of checking, you have to do that each time. And it takes away flexibility from the client to just, Hey, I just want to print some numbers and I already know what they are here. I used method overloading to have a simpler version. And perhaps now you may notice I can get rid of this code. I can actually call the overloaded method. And how cool is that? Now I have the ultimate flexibility. I said doing it this way wasn't really useful and it's not. However, if you need to do that, you can't, that option's there, or you can just call the method with the scanner, the scanner, and then the method itself will get all your inputs, or you can call it with two values. And then it's up to you to determine how you want to get the values. If you want to use a scanner to read from input, that's fine. Or if you want to set explicitly what those parameters are programmatically, you can do that here as well. So again, this just increases the flexibility that you have. And then also that the client who uses the methods has to actually get whatever done they need done by having flexible methods, overloaded methods that don't make assumptions about what the client needs. They just do one thing and they do it well. Even this first method now notice it only does one thing. It reads input and then it passes that input to the overloaded method.